Renee with Delaney Jane Cards. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be making a Halloween card for my little Halloween series here. And we're going to be talking about creating a glow with transparent objects. Uh, I'm no expert. This is just what I do. And I thought it would be fun to bring you along. So here on this Nina cardstock, what I did is stamped the Happy Halloween from this very old Fisker set in some Versafine Onyx Black ink and I heat or uh, heat embossed it with clear embossing powder. It did warp my paper a little bit, which is a little irritating. Um, so I used my magnets um, very strategically and even pulled out some extras so that uh, I could get all my stamping done. So here I stamped the black cat image and I stamped it with my ink on three blackout ink. I wanted to make sure that this was going to be a Copic safe ink that I used and I masked my little kitty in moon. Um, he is standing on the sentiment and then here I'm adding a ghost. These images are drawn uh, very um, loosely and fun and they remind me of like maybe uh, Halloween images that a um, like a school kid would draw. They're really fun. I've had this set for a very long time. I picked it up at a scrapbook expo in like a Fiskars package. Um, so here is the bat that I'm using and I did mask all of these because I'm going to be doing some ink blending and some Copic coloring and, um, well, you'll see, I'm going to try to make the ghost look like he is glowing um, and that he's transparent. So here I stamped off some stars in the background and I had cut some masks off screen and put some masks um, down. You'll see that um, I failed at masking all of the stars. In particular, this one that it took me so long to decide where to put him. So there I was finishing up the extra ma masks and um, then I pulled out my little mat so I could do some ink blending. I just used this little mat that came with my Tim Holtz glass mat. Uh, I have a big one. It fell down in one of my Alex drawers behind the drawer and well, I've been too lazy to like undo the drawer to get it out. So it's there uh, whenever I get to it, I guess. <laughs> so I use some regular distress inks because I am going to be doing some Copic coloring and um, haven't really played around with Copics over my uh, distress oxides. So I'm not really sure uh, how that would look. I, from what I've seen, they kind of um, have a different like hue to them. They kind of, the chalk they, they show up differently. So all I'm doing here is just mapping out my color. I'm very, very lightly putting down color. I don't care if it's splotchy. I don't care if it blends well. I'm just putting the right color in the right spots. Um, so I started with, I think it's squeezed lemonade and then twisted citron and it's probably like, I don't know, salty ocean and then blueprint sketch. Uh, and I blended the whole panel. Uh, I wanted it to glow around the moon and where the cat was. And remember, everything is masked. So even though I'm going over everything, everything, almost everything <laughs> ends up nice and white. See, I tried to push the mask down on that star and I have yet to realize that there is no mask on that star. I will later though. <laughs> so I'm just darkening up my colors. Um, distress inks work much like Copic markers. When you hear everybody tell you that they blend in the fibers of the paper, I'm not sure if that's the case, but what I will tell you is you do need to saturate your paper in order to get a really good blend. So that's what I'm doing here. Definitely making sure that I am putting down plenty of ink and the more ink I put down, the better blend I have. It, you can almost just fill the paper and it will almost blend on its own if you have enough ink down. You don't have to put all that effort into blending. But that's uh, with dark blends, um, very vibrant blends. So here is the first part of this transparent technique. I took the mask off of the ghost and with no extra ink on my blending tools, I am going over the ghost. My thought is that if he was really transparent, I would be able to see background through him uh, it might be muted a little bit so that's why I ink blended over him 
And then after I did that, I ink blended the moon too, just to put a base color down so that I don't have to use so much Copic marker. Uh, that is a Kelly Lettabola trick from way back when. She used to do that all the time with her backgrounds. Ink blend first and then color. Um, she still does some of that, but it used to be a thing for her. So here I went around the outside edge with some black soot and um, just darkened up the edges so it definitely looks more like a night sky to me. And here I'm removing my mask and I realized that I did not have a mask on that star, so I tried to lift the color and yeah he, it did, didn't work <laughs> so then i splattered some water on my panel here to add some spooky night sky like stars in the background i wanted to um really make this like the background the focal point even though that there are images on top I really like the colors in the background. So here I was just cleaning up all of my edges where I hadn't masked very well and then I started coloring my ghost. I picked colors that coordinated with the colors in the background and I added a, well, I guess like a shadow to him in each of the colors where the colors are underneath. I don't know if that makes as much sense. Um, but And then I colored the moon here with some yellows. Uh, I like usually uh, prefer to use warm gray on my moon, but I wanted him to glow, so I used a yellow. I don't know why the moon just became a him, but it did. <laughs> and then I used my, uh, I think these are my warm grays here for my bat. Uh, I wanted to make him appear black, but I didn't really want to use my black. Not that I have anything against my black marker, because I, I do use it. I like adding that deep tone sometimes. And when I was coloring, I made sure that if I hadn't masked my images very well, I still stayed within the lines because I knew that I could come close or almost match the Copa, or the distress ink in the background with my Copic markers, so it was going to be fine. So I just cleaned all that up. And then I started coloring my stars. I used my deeper yellow and then... Um, a much brighter yellow here so that they really stand out against the background and I did add a little bit of a shadow to my ghost I I don't know if it would be a drop shadow it's just where I thought that there would be shadow I don't know all the rules I not at all I just kind of color what I like there are many colorists on YouTube that can teach you so much I just I uh, have been coloring a while, and this is my style of coloring, so um, I'm sorry if you came here to learn something. I mean, I, I will say that the transparent ghost looks transparent, so it does work. Uh, so here I matted or pulled out some of this green cardstock. I don't even know where it's from. I'm going to guess Simon Says Stamp or MFT or Lawn Fawn or I don't know. I have a bunch of those. And then I matted it on a black background. Now these are the glow drops, glow in the dark drops from Nouveau. I have them in this banana color and then like that traditional glow in the dark green color. And I went around and just added some um, drops around to add some interest to the sky. And I had that little piece of scrap paper there with my extra mask on it. You see it over there? That's the mask for the star that I never used. Um, <laughs> But in the end, you can't really tell that he that that star was there and that I missed him, so it all works out. So I just added some more um, dots and drops to the background with those glow in the dark, and then I used my Nouveau pen to go over the ghost. I wanted him to be shimmery and shiny and ghostly and fun, so I went over him with that, and then I did add the black glaze pen for his eyes and mouth and I also did the same for the bat and then I pulled out my white gel pen and added some shine lines to the bat's wings I don't actually think that they would be shiny I think they're kind of like a matte color matte I, I don't think bat's wings are shiny it just looked good here and then I put a highlight on the top of the cat and added a little more um, sparkle to the moon and I used the very tip of it to add little tiny sparkly dots inside my background just for some more shine because you can never have too many shine it's too much shine especially on a card like this 
So I tapped my card just to um, take off any peaks from those Nouveau drops if there were any. So here is a still shot of the card. I do love how it turned out. It's very glowy and beautiful. And then here is what it looks like in the dark and you can see that glow on the go. Thanks for stopping by. I um, would love to talk to you in the comments and give cards generously. Bye!